Watch WKYT News at 10 on the CW Lexington. From WKYT, this is special coverage of Campaign 2022. Good evening, Bill Bryant and Amber Philpott here with the WKYT News Team out and about covering this election tonight. WKYT special coverage continuing now here on the CW Lexington. We will be tracking those key races in the community tonight. A note for those of you at home, you may notice the results come in a little slower tonight than in previous election nights. Yeah, the State Board of Elections cut ties with the company that provided the software to upload the results from county clerk's offices, so the state is now using its own system. Yeah, so results will be reported county by county instead of precinct by precinct. This is much different. The board says its system will be fully operational and back to normal by the November election. Let's take a look at the numbers that we do have right now. And in the top of the ballot is the race for U.S. Senate in Kentucky, where Rand Paul is hoping to win a third term representing the Bluegrass State in Washington. And he is well on his way to apparently doing that to right now, 85% of the vote that we have counted uh, is going to Rand Paul. He is up against uh, five other uh, challengers, and at this point, uh, they are all way back in single digits. And of course, no surprise. Let's take a look at the Democratic side there. Charles Booker was uh, supposed to be the front runner, and you see that happening here tonight with about 81% of the votes as we have the numbers right now. So it would appear that what you'll have is a, a race this fall with uh, two parties solidly behind their candidates. Uh, if the, uh, the Paul and Booker race uh, is what proves out tonight. Looking now at the congressional race in central Kentucky, incumbent Andy Barr gathering 91 percent of the vote in the Republican primary. Derek Petty's uh, ran a limited campaign, but uh, did make a lot of the events and the speeches and, and talked with a lot of folks. Uh, he's getting 9 percent of the vote uh, for his efforts uh, so far. And on to our next here, and we see uh, District 6 on the Democratic side. Jeff Young, this is a name that we have heard several years before in many different elections. Jeff Young there on the Democratic side with 57% of the vote here up against Chris Priest, who is a teacher out of the Berea area, 43%. Young made uh, a run for governor uh, as well in his uh, many campaigns. All right, Hal Rogers, uh, the incumbent uh, down in the 5th Congressional District uh, who has been there mm -hmm. since since 1980, when he first won election, Hal Rogers is the longest serving member of the U.S. House at this point, certainly the longest member ever from Kentucky as well. He's getting 80 percent of the vote uh, within the GOP tonight in the primary. Well, W. We have one more here in the state Senate, uh, District 22 on the Republican side. Uh, this is a closely watched race tonight, really all across the state. Donald Douglas there, uh, the incumbent, 68 percent of the votes there against Andrew Cooper Ryder, who, of course, is that Lexington business owner who made headlines uh, uh, for uh, many things during the COVID uh, pandemic restrictions and also uh, not wanting to go along with some of the regulations during the COVID you know, pandemic. Uh, truly, uh, you know, a traditional Republican in Douglas, who is uh, backed by the establishment and the Republican Party actually uh, giving him uh, some money in this primary election uh, versus Cooper Ryder, who, uh, you know, will acknowledge he's a disruptor who sure. uh, wanted uh, Republicans to be more aggressive in Frankfurt. Well, we have our teams spread out all across the area tonight. WKYT's Chad Hedrick is with Mayor Linda Gorton's campaign here in Lexington at Crank and Boom, and he is standing by, I believe, with Linda Gorton. Chad? I sure do, Bill and Amber. Mayor Gordon saying she's very optimistic that she will come out victorious tonight and move on to November. Everyone, though, very anxious, waiting for those results to start coming in here. I'm joined by Mayor Gordon right now. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Talk to me first just about your thoughts on the race so far. Well, I'm glad it's primary day, and I'm here with a group of great friends who have been my team my main team here and we're having dinner and looking forward to seeing the results and moving forward to the general election. I want to go back to last week to our televised debate. We saw a very heated side to you at, at, at points in that debate. What sparked your, your, your energy at, during that, that hour? Well, you know, I don't take very kindly to things that are not factual. And I... Um, you know, I felt like I needed to counter a lot of things that were said, 
and it was a it was a good healthy debate a lot of feistiness right mm -hmm. And so we're lucky to live in a country where we can do this and have debates and vote on our elected officials. And it's a great thing. I want to talk about, you know, we've heard crime and housing. These have been some big topics in this uh, primary election. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you feel like maybe you've not gotten to talk more about as well and, and hope to continue those conversations about crime, housing, and, and other topics as we look towards November? Well, you know, the thing is we focus every single day on crime. This is not a an occasional thing for us. We focus on it every single day. I work with the chief of police. I work with my commissioner of public safety, all of our partners in Lexington who are very focused on crime. So that is not a sometime thing. We concentrate on it all the time. I have a lot of new initiatives that I'm looking forward to working on, my ag tech initiative, my new programs. One of them will have some uh, loans and grants for nonprofits to take blighted property and turn it into affordable housing, which we think will be a really good thing. It's the first time Lexington's ever done that. And we have a new incentive for infill and redevelopment. We've got a lot of creative things in the budget that we're going to work on next. Mayor Gordon, thanks so much for joining us. We'll check back in with you throughout the hour. All right. All right. Thank you. Bill and Amber, we will send it back to you as we wait for those election results. Some cheers of approval for an interview uh, yeah. there. Linda Gordon, of course, the third woman to mm -hmm. head the uh, urban county government. You had Pam Miller in the mm -hmm. 1990s and early uh, in this uh, century, Teresa Isaac, uh, both of whom are still uh, out there alive and well. And, you know, you have the normal challenges of running the city of Lexington size, but she did it also in the middle of a pandemic as well to add on to what a mayor is already dealing and with. And her closing argument, basically, in this primary mm -hmm. campaign was a, an ad for front page in the Herald Leader on mm -hmm. Sunday saying, you know, while the country was in crisis, Linda kept Lexington calm mm -hmm. sort of thing. We are going to uh, follow now with uh, one of her challengers. Yeah, Chelsea Jones is with the Kloiber campaign tonight here at his Lexington home. Good evening, Chelsea. Well, you guys, we just spoke to 6th District Councilman David Kloiber. He told us he is on pins and needles as he waits for those election results for mayor to start to trickle in. He says uh, family, friends, and supporters at his home tonight are helping to ease some of that worry. He told us at this point there's not much he can do, but he feels his campaign did a great job in meeting people in the community, encouraging them to vote. Kloiber spent about $275,000 of his own money for his campaign. He says if he is one of the two candidates to move forward in this mayor's race, he will continue to support himself financially if necessary. But he says if he's not, he will continue to remain civically engaged. Take a listen. I think that we really put our all into it. A lot of people put a lot of energy and effort into reaching out to the community and just connecting with people. And I think that's all we can really ask. It's been meeting people. It's been talking to real people. You know, I have met people who have lived lives that are so different than my own and learned so much from them. And so regardless of the outcome of what happens tonight, I've grown as a person and I'm hoping to share that growth with everyone. Now, Kloiber says if he is elected mayor, he plans to tackle crime and the lack of affordable housing. Bill and Amber, back to you. All right. We don't know exactly how those numbers are going to come out tonight, but we do know, and, uh, and Chelsea made reference to this, yeah. Kloiber is willing to spend money. And he put, put a quite a bit in himself. 275000 of his own that he loaned to his campaign. That was for the primary. He could uh, put mm -hmm. uh, more in. Uh, he's a, he was a technology guy mm -hmm. who uh, runs the, uh, the Kloiber Foundation, which does programs for uh, kids and after-school programs, sure. that kind of thing. Let's get now to WKYT's Shelby Lofton. She is with the Wallace campaign at Elixir in downtown Lexington. Shelby? Bill, Am Bill and Amber, A.G. Wallace has joined us now. He got here a little bit before 7 and he was greeted by a lot of cheers, a lot of smiling faces and the candidate himself is all smiles tonight. Now he describes himself as a politician, as a public servant, not a politician. He said the city needs more people like him. The candidate has made housing one of his key issues. He said it's become more unaffordable to live in this city and he's been supportive of constructing new 
new housing here, but he's emphasized being aware of gentrification and being supportive of people who live in areas that are being developed. He said he has described his campaign as a grassroots run, and he said if he doesn't move on after tonight, he wants to continue to be a part of this conversation heading into November. Wallace is a jack of all trades. He's a minister, he's a veteran and a community leader. He was a leader of the Lexington chapter of the NAACP. He also founded the Bishop and Chase Foundation, which is a nonprofit that works to bring resources and money to undersourced neighborhoods in this community. We're going to catch up with him soon. For now, live in downtown Lexington, Shelby Lofton, WKYT. Shelby, thank Thank you. And I think she said it best there, a jack of all trades, because when I do yeah. think of Adrian Wallace, I think of just solely community, community driven done lots at of things, all levels, including being a veteran. Absolutely. And, and, uh, serving the country. Uh, I think he's enjoyed this race, mm -hmm. you know, bringing a voice to issues and to some neighborhoods that uh, may have uh, felt left out. And he talks about uh, doing, uh, you know, more coordination mm -hmm. within the city. Crime, a major issue that both he and Kloiber have uh, emphasized. M Mayor Gordon has said she has worked hard on that issue. As we sit here tonight, uh, there's a breaking story Absolutely. in Lexington where a vehicle has been uh, apparently uh, shot up yeah. uh, on New Circle Road. So it is, it is a, an issue that's uh, It being is discussed. part of the conversation yes. that will continue yeah. on through this race well into November. Please stay with us. There is much more to come here. Do you suffer from knee pain? Ever been diagnosed with osteoarthritis or worried about the risks involved with knee surgery? It hurt all the time, like the nerves were rubbing against each other. I was at the point of either replace my knees because I'm tired of this pain. Get the relief you need without surgery. We're Arthritis Knee Pain Centers, the premier leaders in non-surgical knee pain treatments. Instead of surgically replacing your knees, our state-of-the-art procedures replenish the depleted natural cushioning in your joints with an FDA-approved shock-absorbing gel without surgery and without downtime. After the first injection, I knew it was going to work. We've successfully treated thousands of patients. Medicare and most private insurance cover this procedure. Full motion, no pain, walking, everything just back normal like it used to be. Now with locations in Lexington, call 1-800-829-5680 for a free no-obligation knee pain assessment or go to arthritisneepain.com. The end of the casino as we know it. Introducing Golden Hearts Games, the world's first charity casino. Play slots, bingo, blackjack, and video poker. Win real cash that you keep. Over $40,000 won every day. Best of all, playing supports a charity of your choice. Works on phones and computers. No downloads. Sign up now and get a free 100% match welcome bonus. Golden Hearts Games, the world's first charity casino. West Shore Home is the best option when it comes to shower and bathroom modeling. And today I'm joined by Kirsten from West Shore Home to find out what exactly makes West Shore different. So Joe, we've helped over 100,000 homeowners replace their showers and baths. And what that means is we have seen everything. No matter what your current bath or shower project looks like, our installers are ready to tackle it. It really is amazing what they do. Some of those tile jobs can be really difficult, but they make it look so easy. Now, for somebody who's not sure if now is the best time to move forward with their project, how can you help them? So we have an amazing offer that's going to help everyone save big if they decide to do their project right now. It's free installation on all shower and bath projects, plus 18 months of no payments and no interest financing. Kirsten, thanks so much, folks. If you've been putting off that shower bath project, call West Shore Home right now. And when you do, take advantage of this great offer. Free installation on all shower and bath projects, plus 18 months of no payments and no interest financing. Welcome back into our primary uh, election coverage here tonight on the CW Lexington. We are continuing to follow those numbers come in here tonight. We have just learned that the Associated Press has called the race tonight on the Republican side there for the U.S. Senate in Rand Paul. Of course, Bill, this is not something that we uh, would have thought any different. And also yep. hearing now that they've also gone ahead and called on the Democratic yep. side for Booker as well this evening, Charles.
Charles Booker. So AP seeing those clear trends with 86 percent of the early vote uh, at this point going to uh, Rand Paul. And now, if that's correct, we do have an AP call for Booker as well. Uh, on the Democratic side, he's getting 78 percent of the vote uh, against uh, several uh, challengers for the Democratic nomination. But it uh, appears now we will have a Rand Paul versus Charles Booker U.S. Senate race, as many uh, anticipated. And so uh, you have a, a libertarian-leaning Paul will be taking on uh, an unabashed progressive in uh, Charles Booker, who and talks about uh, where he stands on issues very clearly. One can imagine that this will be very lively, very spirited as we go through the months up till to November. Can you imagine Fancy Farm and uh, any debates there may be and so forth? You right. will probably be there, so we <laughs> will we will know all about that. Interesting years ahead. A year ahead. All right. Uh, Garrett Weimer is standing by for us. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, it is certainly a race that has gotten uh, a lot of attention already. We saw those numbers come in. We heard about uh, that race call, and we do expect to hear from at least one of the candidates uh, here in the next little bit. But as we saw there, uh, this is going to be your race, it looks like, uh, for the next few months heading up to November. Now, there were multiple uh, candidates on the ballot, but uh, when it comes down to it, Senator Rand Paul and Charles Booker going head to head. Now, Booker has uh, already had Paul squarely in his sights for a while now, but uh, still had to beat out three other candidates in the Democratic primary tonight. He did far outraise them, brought in $3.3 million through the end of April. Also had the edge in name recognition. He's a former state representative. And you'll remember he really made headlines statewide in a tight primary for Senate back in 2020 when he narrowly lost to Amy McGrath. Now, as for Senator Paul, he was one of six candidates on the Republican primary ballot. Didn't really expect any trouble, though. He is, of course, the incumbent looking for his third term now. He was first elected back in 2010, and campaign finance reports show he brought in more than $20 million through the end of April. Now, both candidates talked with our D.C. Bureau about their message for voters and finding common ground. You know, I think one thing about liberty leaving people alone is that it brings people together. You can have a variety of opinions. So, you know, I have strong opinions on COVID, on natural immunity that you get from getting it, but you can disagree. You can get 14 vaccines if you want, or you can get none. I don't care about a title. I don't come from politics. And I just firmly believe with everything in me that we stand together on our common bonds. We can change things. We can change the system. We can pull up the roots of inequity and structural racism. And, and ultimately, this is about who's going to fight for you. Now, Charles Booker is hosting an election night watch party at a brewery in Louisville. That is going on right now. We do expect to hear him speak at some point tonight. And we're told Senator Paul is not holding any sort of media availability tonight, but we do expect uh, him to release a statement later. And again, so far, it looks like uh, everything uh, has set up as planned for those two front runners on this primary night, guys. All right. It'll be interesting as the race goes along to see them take advantage of uh, what they may bring to the table. For instance, uh, as an incumbent, uh, you have uh, Senator Paul can have those high-profile televised arguments mm -hmm. that he is known for sure. and has had those like with uh, Dr. Fauci. Uh, with uh, Charles Booker, uh, he's good with the crowd, yeah. and he doesn't mind traveling to, uh, you know, if there are 100 people that want to turn out in Pikeville, he's there. Absolutely, you know? and he's yeah. made no bones about being right. in the rural areas and being in the inner yeah. city areas Hood to the holler and it's, getting it's, down yeah. to the grassroots on both of those issues for both different kinds yeah, of people. Yeah. So it'll be an interesting race uh, for the U.S. Senate uh, here in Kentucky. Now, let's look at a state Senate race that we've been watching very carefully here tonight. Uh, we'll make note that Republicans have a super majority uh, in the uh, Senate as well as in the House, and there just aren't enough uh, Democratic candidates to make a dent in that, really. But uh, there is, uh, you know, w exactly where do you go within the, the Republican Party for uh, the nominees? And Donald Douglas, at this point, is uh, up with a strong lead over Andrew Cooper Ryder. And WKYT's Phil Pendleton is with the Douglas campaign tonight, and he joins us now. Phil? 
We are here at the Sedona Tap House just off of Harrodsburg Road in South Lexington, one of the areas that Senator Douglas uh, represents in that new redrawn districting line. And we, he is over here, just over my left shoulder, meeting with his supporters. About a dozen members of the Jessamine County Republican Party are here throwing their support to Senator Donald Douglas. I asked a few of them uh, why they supported him, and they simply said they feel like he is the better candidate, the better candidate to bring the party together and Senator Douglas also told us that he feels like he has that more unifying role in this situation so we're going to be here to follow the results as they come in back to you all right Phil thank you so much all right that'll be uh, you know interesting outcome tonight that sure. we watch WKYT's Grayson Passmore is with the Cooper Rider campaign here in Lexington at his coffee shop brew good evening Grayson Amber and Bill, we are inside Cooper Writer's Coffee Shop Brewed right now where a watch party is just getting underway. Friends and supporters are making their way inside. Brewed is also the spot where Cooper Writer first started gaining attention back in 2020 when he defied state COVID-19 protocols and refused to close his shop. Now on election night, Cooper Writer is gaining attention again in the run for the Senate seat, but also after he filed a lawsuit against Fayette County Clerk Don Blevins. Coop Ryder says volunteers with his campaign were staying 100 feet away from polling locations throughout the county when Blevins said if they didn't leave, they would be removed or arrested. A federal judge did rule in favor of Cooper Ryder, saying his volunteers may gather outside the polling places as long as they are 100 feet away from the entrance. Cooper Ryder said other than this, he's received positive feedback throughout the day. His campaign has been able to raise a considerable amount of money, and he's been critical of the amount the GOP has been spending this primary election, saying if he wins, there will be a shift where Senate Republicans won't be able to ignore the large amount of voters upset with the lack of conservatism and the overspending from the state Senate. Now just stay with us the rest of the night. We'll bring you more from Cooper Ryder's watch party as it goes on. Live in Lexington, at Grayson Passmore, WKYT. Grayson, thank you. Bill, that race is really interesting to me in the sense that COVID is really something that most voters in those areas would know those two yeah. candidates for in terms of very different sides, exactly. really, when exactly. you talk about COVID protocols ending COVID yeah. protocols in the state. Uh, although, ultimately, on the same side, right. doing away with, but it was yeah. how aggressive mm -hmm. did you want to be. Uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. And it'll be interesting next year, in 2023, sure. when we have the statewide elections, to see how much uh, COVID Comes still back. plays, you yeah. know, and if, it, and if it does. All right, uh, we're coming back in just a moment. We have some new numbers in on the city races, and this is WKYT coverage of Campaign 22 primary night. Your luck is on a roll with these exciting new scratch-off games from the Kentucky Lottery. Now at your nearest Kentucky Lottery retailer. Hi, folks. Medicare Part C plans with extra benefits like getting money added back to your Social Security check may now be available to you in your zip code. Make sure you're not missing out. It's simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, they'll look up your zip code and see if you're eligible. Three, they'll check for plans with extra benefits like prescriptions, dental coverage, and the benefit that adds money back to your Social Security check every single month. Call now. I called to get everything I deserve. I called to check my zip code for a plan with a benefit that adds money back to my Social Security check. I called to check my zip code. Millions of people have called the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Call, check your zip code, see if you're eligible, and get what you deserve. Call now. Call 1-800-673-4406. That's 1-800-673-4406 now. I got to move this somewhere, and I don't know where I'm moving it to. Homelessness. Everywhere I turn, it's a door closed. A growing problem throughout the state. Caused by increased rents, rising food costs, and high gas prices. I just don't know where we're going from here. We've never seen it as unnerving as it is now. And it's not just big cities. It's smaller towns, too. The cycle of poverty is expanding. WKYT investigates Homeless in the Bluegrass, Thursday at 6. 
Welcome back to WKYT News coverage of primary election night here in Kentucky. And if you're just joining us, the U.S. Senate race is set here in Kentucky, and it will be Republican Rand Paul versus Democrat Charles Booker. An interesting race in the months ahead. All right. And we are also watching several races right here in Lexington, namely that mayor's race. And as we see numbers coming in right now, we should let you know that these numbers are coming from absentee votes and those early voting numbers, which, of course, this year, folks had three days to do some early voting. And right now, you see with about 78 percent incumbent Linda Gorton with the vote right now. Way out front, uh, Adrian Wallace is next and David Kloiber now are running third at the moment. And uh, we'll watch that. The top two move on to November. Now, let's uh, move and look uh, quickly at the race for Urban County Council here in Lexington. Uh, remember that uh, eventually in November, you elect three Urban County Council at large members, and the top vote-getter in November will become the vice mayor. And right now, uh, you can see that there are four candidates uh, that are running uh, ahead of the, uh, the pack right now. James Brown, uh, Dan Wu, Chuck Ellinger the second, and Bill Farmer, Jr. And now we are looking at the race for Fayette County Attorney tonight, or here are the rest of those Urban County at-large numbers. And now... Again, we'll show you the mayor's race. Notice M Maloney was not far back, uh, by the way, as well in that uh, in that race. So it's it's uh, going to be interesting. We'll keep, continue to watch the numbers come in for the uh, council at large. But Beth Musgrave mm -hmm. is joining us now from the Lexington Herald Leader, and she covers uh, City Hall and uh, all the events around the, the uh, Lexington area. And Beth, thank you uh, for coming in. Uh, it looks like uh, that Mayor Linda Gordon is out to, with a with a pretty strong advantage in this uh, in this primary tonight. Yeah, it, I mean, obviously these are still, um, you know, very early yep. results, but that it is not surprising. I think most people expect Gordon not to have a problem getting out of this primary. Um, we know, obviously, that um, the turnout's going to be low. Where we traditionally see high voter turnout is on that in the uh, south side of Lexington, and that is actually her former council district. So she's expected to do very, very well in this primary. Beth, let's talk about the race for Fayette County attorney. This is a race where you see someone who has been in office for quite some time. Also, the person challenging them, someone that has been in a council position and has also been a longtime attorney. A lot of different issues came up about this, namely uh, one of the issues surrounding the arrests that were made during the protests back in 2020 and also the de decriminalization of marijuana. Big topics in that Fayette County attorney's race. Yeah, and this is the first time that the incumbent Larry Roberts has had a major opponent since he was elected in 2006. Now, he's he's been running trying to say, you know, listen, I've made all these reforms in my office. I've come up with innovative programs. Um, his opponent, Angela Evans, who is a former council member, has said, you know what, it's time for change. We need to think about crime differently. We need to look at recidivism. We need to look at, you know, how we make this office so people don't reoffend. Um, it's time for change. So it'll be interesting to see how voters react to that message. And that uh, decision will be made tonight by uh, Democratic uh, voters alone. There is no Republican in that. Uh, Beth, quickly back on the uh, council at large race, just uh, very quickly. You, uh, you know, you run hard and then you have to run harder <laughs> after uh, what happens is that this uh, election brings it down to six candidates who square off for those three seats uh, in November. That is correct. And um, the, those uh, early results are very interesting, but also not surprising. Um, you know, that race has four either current or former council members in it. James Brown, Chuck Ellinger, uh, Bill Farmer and Richard Maloney, are all, who are all doing well. But the other um, candidate that's also doing very well is Dan Wu, who is a first time candidate, but has come out of the gate pretty hard with his fundraising. He's done a good job with his uh, he has a ground game. He's been going door to door. That's what he needs to do in order to to uh, basically make a name for himself in a very crowded race. So that will who is the, the candidate I'll be watching for to see what, how he finishes. All right. Tonight. Our thanks to Beth Musgrave, who covers uh, City Hall for the Lexington Herald Leader. Thank you. And there is much more to come. Stay with us. After a car crash, the big insurance companies will try to downplay your case. They say things like, it's only a fender bender or it's just a herniated disc. I worry that some law firms fall for this BS. 
not us. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. Start your mornings with WKYT Mornings. We'll catch you up on local news as you wake up. We were following three crashes, all that happened overnight. Know before you go with an accurate first alert forecast. Those showers, those storms, this is an action-packed setup. And beat the commute with first alert traffic, making sure you're on time all the time. Even in the downtown area, traffic is starting to slow down. So get ready for your day with us from 4.30 to 9. Your mornings start on WKYT Mornings. Do you suffer from knee pain? Ever been diagnosed with osteoarthritis? Or worried about the risks involved with knee surgery? It hurt all the time, like the nerves were rubbing against each other. I was at the point of either replace my knees because I'm tired of this pain. Get the relief you need without surgery. We're Arthritis Knee Pain Centers, the premier leaders in non-surgical knee pain treatments. Instead of surgically replacing your knees, our state-of-the-art procedures replenish the depleted natural cushioning in your joints with an FDA-approved shock-absorbing gel, without surgery and without downtime. After the first injection, I knew it was going to work. We've successfully treated thousands of patients. Medicare and most private insurance cover this procedure. Full motion, no pain, walking, everything just back normal like it used to be. Now with locations in Lexington, call 1-800-829-5680 for a free no-obligation knee pain assessment or go to arthritisknepain.com. Chinatown's been hit hard lately. I have to save down the whole ring. They give you any trouble, you let me know. If you don't mind me saying, probably better to not pick fights with criminals. Nikki, are those explosives? Okay, it's official. My sister's a superhero. Kung Fu. New episode this Wednesday at 9, 8 central, only on The CW. Cancer affects all of us, and it can be tough. That's why we have A Link to Hope. Stories that educate and encourage. Find Link to Hope on WKYT.com. Brought to you by Kentucky Cancer Link. Welcome back into our campaign 2022 coverage here on the CW Lexington. We are following a number of key races tonight, namely here in Lexington, the race for mayor. It's been interesting already. And as you see, Linda Gordon, the incumbent mayor who's running for a second term, is off to an early lead. And it is significant right now with the early voting. In second place right now, Adrian Wallace and David Kloiber just behind in third place as we're watching that mayor's race tonight. And speaking of Adrian Wallace, WKYT Shelby Lofton is live for us now at Elixir in downtown Lexington, standing by to talk with Adrian Wallace. Bill and Amber rejoin you from inside Elixir. It's loud in here. We'll try to be loud for you. The party rolls on here. The band is getting started. And I'm joined now by the man of the night here at the party, mayoral candidate Adrian Wallace. You've been campaigning for months. How are you feeling in this moment? Well, you know, as I've told everybody, it's kind of like, ah, you know, I mean, do the people like me? They would show up to my party. I don't know. You know, but honestly, seriously, uh, the message has resonated. I've gotten a lot of great feedback. A lot of families are hurting. Uh, it's a very serious issue with the record homicides that we have, the record retirements from the police department, the record low of applications, the housing crisis with housing affordability and affordable housing. We, we have got to make a change. We need to look into 2050 and stop making policies for 1998. We have got to move into 2050. I created a 2050 committee because we need to realize that technology and mobility and autonomous driving vehicles play a part in our infrastructure. We are the horse capital of the world, but we have got to put people first. And so we have got to retain and maintain our identity as the horse capital of the world while also making sure that we put forward people-centric policy. And so it's resonated. I feel good. I, I wish that the turnout today was better, but uh, we're excited. You mentioned Turner. I talked to the Secretary of State yesterday, and he said it's low. He had to dial back his predictions for today. Do you have a message for voters on coming out to the primaries in particular? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, we tell folks that civic engagement is so important. It's the most important thing. We live in a democracy for a reason. And far too many people fought, bled, and died for the right to vote. And we have got to exercise it. And so as mayor, uh, if I win this race in November, if I'm uh, great, uh, 
if I'm able to win tonight and move forward to November, one of the main things that I'm going to push for, push for is making sure that we get folks out to the polls and, and civic engagement is, is a, a major issue. I used to work with Allison Ludiger Grimes in the Secretary of State's office to make sure that we, we study the health of, of our civic engagement across the state. And, and I want to continue that work with, with alongside the Secretary of State's office, the NAACP and other partners. You have said no matter what happens tonight, you want to continue to be a part of the conversation. What do you think the biggest talking point should be moving forward in the next five years in Lexington? The biggest thing is, is we got to put our people first. Far too many people realize that we have a great city. It's a great community. People love to visit. But far too many of our people are being priced out of our city. We have a mayor who says it's okay that people live in other counties, that they get put out of their homes. The Vita Gatewood, we just did a, uh, a conference last night about the fact that on May 31st, she will be homeless. And this is a woman who can pay her bills, and she's actually uh, eligible for home ownership in September. This is the type of family that we should support, and those are the things that I'm going to make sure that I do on day one of my administration, put policies in place to protect our people. All right, Adrian Wallace, we're going to have to cap it there, but thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, I appreciate it. Bill and Amber, I'm going to send it back to you. Well, having a good time tonight yeah. at the Wallace uh, campaign. Interesting, it appears he's having a good time. He's very energetic. But at the same time, addressing very yeah. serious issues and bringing up uh, those topics. And uh, so it will be interesting if he is able to uh, finish uh, second tonight and go on to November and yeah. uh, uh, to see how that uh, dialogue goes. Uh, he's in a close race. David yeah. Clarber just behind him, and we're uh, watching those numbers tonight. Well, our Chad Hedrick is following the Gorton campaign tonight. We want to check in with him right now. Chad? Well, Bill and Amber, a lot of excitement just a few moments ago as Mayor Gordon was reading off some of those early returns. We know she has a healthy lead right now in this race, and she said that she's very confident. You can tell they're very excited here, waiting for those numbers to come in. She says she has a lot more work to do with being mayor of Lexington, and she's looking forward to progressing with that in November. So we'll be keeping an eye on things, but she is very confident that things are going to go her way tonight. We'll send it back to you. All right, Chad, thanks so much. All right, and uh, we've been checking with the campaigns throughout the night. Uh, David Kloiber is having a party at home yeah. uh, this evening. He uh, has represented the, the Hamburg area uh, for the last two years on council, a freshman member of council who said that uh, he needs a, a bigger podium if he's going mm -hmm. to be able to bring some issues uh, to Lexington's attention. Yeah, and that's he has what a seat at the table, yeah. he said, at council, but obviously needs a larger platform. Let's check in with Chelsea Jones that is following the Cloyber camp tonight. Well, when we spoke to 6th District Councilman David Kloiber, he says he's nervous but confident about tonight's election. If elected mayor, he says he plans to tackle crime and the lack of affordable housing here in Lexington. Now, Kloiber has spent about $275,000 for his own campaign. He says if he advances in the mayor's race, he is prepared to support himself financially again if necessary. You guys, back to you. All right, Chelsea, thank you very much. All right, let's get to, we do have some numbers right now that you'd like us to look at. And we'll do that in the U.S. Senate race, race here in Kentucky. And uh, the Associated Press on the basis of uh, early numbers and uh, by our uh, obvious look at the numbers as well, uh, we have declared that Rand Paul and Charles Booker will be the nominees of their respective parties. Paul representing the GOP and Booker the Democrats heading into the fall. And this, uh, as we would imagine, is going to be a spirited race. This is probably going to be an expensive race. A lot of airtime you're going to see with this particular race as we head towards November. Booker, of course, uh, hoping to make history uh, as the first African-American mm -hmm. to uh, represent uh, Kentucky uh, in the U.S. Senate and uh, also uh, bucking some history in that uh, the last time a Democrat was elected to a U.S. Senate seat from Kentucky was 1992 when Wendell Ford won his last term uh, in the U.S. Senate. He was governor and then uh, U.S. Senate to Rand Paul, who said in 2010 when he ran, and he was uh, at that time uh, a part of the Tea Party movement, uh, indicated that uh, he did not want to become a career politician, but now he says, you know, you don't, <laughs> you don't just go with the rules you wish that there were. You have to play with the rules as they are, yeah. and so he is now seeking a third So here term. we are, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, Senator Rand Paul is facing a lot of competition for his seat in the Senate, but of course we see that this has been called here today. There were five Five other Republicans that were running against him. And four Democrats, uh, including the, uh, Charles Booker, were uh, in that race tonight. Booker now the nominee. WKYT Washington News Bureau reporter 
Senator Jamie Bittner is joining us live with the battle for your vote and a Washington perspective on that. Jamie? Yeah, and it looks like we're headed for a Booker versus Paul race this November. Rand Paul is running for his third term in the U.S. Center. Booker will certainly try to beat him by running on a platform that's a bit opposite of Paul's. The economy is almost always a main issue for voters in every election, says University of Kentucky political expert D. Stephen Voss. Kentucky voters uh, tend to be fairly moderate on economic issues, including Kentucky Republicans. Um, they tend to be very conservative on social issues. So for this Democrat hoping to beat Rand Paul this November, Charles Booker is focused on the reality of Kentucky and its economy. Kentucky isn't really a red state. Um, we are a disenfranchised and marginalized and often ignored and abandoned state. Booker envisions a Kentucky New Deal focused on health care, infrastructure and ending generational poverty to be able to speak to the struggles that really are bigger than partisan divides and also to call out the hate and the racism that's been weaponized to drive us apart. Incumbent Rand Paul recognizes many bluegrass families are struggling. I think most people instinctively know that nothing in life really is free. You're going to have to pay for it through hard work. Right now we're paying for it through inflation, and it could get much worse. Paul says he's campaigning on a message of limited government and curb spending. People come uh, from government and they say, we will give you checks. Here's $1,400. Here's a check. You know, we're going to take care of you. But they don't tell you that the penalty or the price for that is inflation. Spending that he blames for those rising prices. And uh, we were just talking here. We know this will be an exciting race because uh, we know these two candidates. Uh, right. they, they're aggressive, and they are somewhat known quantities uh, in Kentucky and nationwide. Yeah, Jamie, Senator Paul has made a lot of national headlines. He's currently uh, very recognizable, and Charles Booker has been pushing hard on social media and appearing on a lot of national cable networks. Does that sort of widespread recognition, whether good or bad, change anything for voters when it comes to Election well, that's, Day? That's a really interesting question and it's one that I asked the political expert I spoke to and you have to remember here too you know Rand Paul is not the only one with name recognition in this race Booker was also a former state representative that political expert told me however in U.S. Senate races normally name recognition doesn't matter much and he says that's because U.S. Senate races are normally so well funded and so well advertised that by the general election on November 8th voters will likely know both candidates even better than they do right now. Live in Washington, I'm Jamie Bittner for WKYT. All right, Jamie, thank you. And we know that, you know, the, the national interest in this race yes. is real. The control of the Senate mm -hmm. is up for grabs uh, uh, with a one or two vote margin uh, with that situation. And there'll be national money coming in. We'll be talking about this we race will. a lot. Right. All right, stay with us. We'll have much more to come. We took our signature sandwich and turned it up a notch. With cheese and bacon, it's the new Signature Club. Remix by Zaxby's. so creepy. DuckDuckGo is a free all-in-one privacy app with a built-in search engine, web browser, one-click data clearing, and more. 
Stop companies like Google from watching you by downloading the app today. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. The family that Zacks is together relaxes together. Give more family time with the Zacks Family Pack. Your choice of 20 chicken fingers or 30 boneless wings. Plus fries and Texas toast with Zacks sauce or spicy Zacks sauce. Only at Zacks Feast. Welcome back into our campaign 2022 election coverage here tonight. We are focused on several races. One of those tonight is really a widely watched race in this area, but really, Bill, across the state when we're talking about State Senate 22 there with Donald Douglas and Andrew Cooper Ryder. And what you've had happen is Kentucky, especially in these legislative races, has tilted so red in recent years and, and so much toward the Republican Party such that they have super majorities in both the Senate and the House. Now the contests often are within the Republican primaries, and we sure saw a heated one here. Uh, Donald Douglas, though, appears to have uh, a significant advantage with the early voting over Andrew Cooper Ryder. Of course, we do await uh, some more uh, coming in. This is six uh, percent of the numbers, so uh, when we get more numbers in, we'll see where that race goes. And we will take a look at some other state races here. This is State Senate District 34 on the Republican side. Jared Carpenter the incumbent there with 79% of the vote right now. Yeah, and more than half the vote is in there, and it appears that Carpenter will have no problem getting the Republican nomination. There is a Democrat uh, in that race uh, as well, Susan Centra, so uh, he will have another election to get through if Jared Carpenter is to return to the state Senate uh, next January. Now, we'll look at uh, some of the House seats that we're watching tonight. This is House District 56. It's uh, the Democratic primary. Grace Vandergrift, who is the mayor of Midway, uh, taking on Benjamin Nolan. And right now, Nolan with the advantage in the early voting. All right, let's look at House Race 73 here on the Democratic side. And no numbers, no are numbers right there. there. All right, we'll move on to uh, what we will want to do right now. Let's talk to Austin Horn, who is uh, uh, a young and very smart <laughs> political reporter for the Lexington Herald Leader, and uh, he's joining us tonight. And uh, Austin, let's go back. Let's talk about that uh, race for uh, Douglas and Cooper Ryder. We don't have enough numbers to know who's going to win this at this point, uh, but we do know that that was that has been one heck of a race, right? Absolutely. I mean it. It's been the most expensive race on both the Senate and the House side uh, that we've seen in this primary this whole cycle. And Andrew Cooper, Ryder, I'm sure you guys have talked about him before on your coverage so far tonight, but he's he's very much of the kind of liberty, sort of post-libertarian uh, Republican mold. He's a local celebrity. You know, he, he uh, went against the COVID restrictions locally, and he's going up against an incumbent who has maybe less of an incumbent's advantage than usual in Donald Douglas since he was elected in a special election in 2021. But still, we see those early numbers come in, and, and Douglas appears to be up. Uh, I do know that Cooper Ryder um, eked it out in Garrett County, which is perhaps the most rural part of the district in the South. Um, but but we'll keep seeing as, as the numbers roll in. I think one of the things, Austin, that Bill and I have talked about is, is the lack of Democratic opponents. And, of course, in this race, uh, the winner of this race on the Repub Republican side will face Chuck Eddy. He's no stranger to politics, but certainly there was only one name there on that side. No others running in that Democratic primary. And, and Austin, really, there are a lot of races in this state that are uncontested. I mean, isn't it true the uh, Democrats only... Uh, fielded in 47 House seats, right? Exactly. Um, and I think a lot of folks would tell you that there are a lot of races that Democrats maybe could have had a shot at um, that, that they didn't run some candidates in. I mean, the biggest and most glaring one is, is Dennis Parrott, one of the, the few extremely moderate uh, uh, Democrats in the Senate. Um, he, he's retiring from his Elizabethtown Senate seat, and uh, no Democrat ran to replace him. It, it's going to be a Republican. We'll see how it pans out uh, tonight and who that exactly is. Um, but there are several races like that around the state, and there are really only a, a handful of races where Democrats um, have much of a possibility of picking up extra seats across the state. And, and that's when they have uh, margins of only 25 out of 100 representatives in the House and only eight out of uh, 30 senators in, in the Senate. 
Believe it or not, when I started in this business, it was just about the opposite, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, who was uh, uh, in power in Frankfurt. Austin Horn, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, your expertise. Look thank forward you. to reading your articles about uh, tonight's uh, election. All right. And we appreciate you being here with us tonight where you continue uh, to, to take a look at more numbers, but also this one. It's yeah, very thank you. All right, it is because Nick Wilson uh, is going to be going to uh, Frankfurt, and uh, he will be representing uh, all of Whitley County and a part of Laurel County. Uh, he will be a new face in Frankfurt, but no stranger to those who once he gets there. He was a contestant on Survivor. You'll remember that. Also an attorney, uh, so uh, he will arrive there. Uh, well known. Uh, apparently, he may have uh, future political plans, and so uh, Nick Wilson is one that uh, we'll be watching uh, tonight and uh, throughout uh, uh, his time in Frankfurt. Very interesting. Yeah. All right, stay with us as we continue to follow the numbers here on our campaign 2022 coverage. Do you suffer from knee pain? Ever been diagnosed with osteoarthritis or worried about the risks involved with knee surgery? It hurt all the time, like the nerves were rubbing against each other. I was at the point of either replace my knees because I'm tired of this pain. Get the relief you need without surgery. We're Arthritis Knee Pain Centers, the premier leaders in non-surgical knee pain treatments. Instead of surgically replacing your knees, our state-of-the-art procedures replenish the depleted natural cushioning in your joints with an FDA-approved shock-absorbing gel. Without surgery and without downtime. After the first injection, I knew it was going to work. We've successfully treated thousands of patients. Medicare and most private insurance cover this procedure. Full motion, no pain, walking, everything just back normal like it used to be. Now with locations in Lexington, call 1-800-829-5680 for a free no-obligation knee pain assessment or go to arthritisneepain.com. Meet Renee, bank manager and mom of the year. But when she gets on her bike, she becomes Rebel Renee. Rebel Renee is the most outspoken member of her book club. And she didn't even... Be the book. It's rumored she once used her phone at trivia night. Cleveland! And she isn't above greasing some palms to get things done. And Rebel Renee rides with Geico because savings and great service are two things she'd never rebel against. Geico. Savings and service for both your sides. This is where worry turns into relief. Where confusion turns into answers. This is where your family can turn to the experts for the big things and the little things. Extraordinary care is right here. UK Healthcare, the power of advanced medicine. This is a town called Basic. Where the townspeople are happy with a basic lifestyle. And that's a 2022 Nissan Altima with more attitude, more style. And a powerful turbocharged engine to help put BASIC in your rear view forever. Looks like BASIC will never be the same. The 2022 Nissan Altima. Anything but BASIC. Get to Nissan today and test drive the 2022 Altima with up to 39 miles per gallon highway. Welcome back to WKYT News primary election night coverage, and it's already an interesting evening. We do have winners in the U.S. Senate race. As far as the nominations are concerned on the Republican side, it will be Rand Paul taking on Democrat Charles Booker in the fall, a race that will be watched across Kentucky, certainly, and around the nation as well, as there will be a hard-fought battle for control of the Senate. And as we look ahead, the 6th District here, we know that Andy Barr will be moving on the incumbent there, 89% of the vote in the U.S. House District 6 on the Republican side. Barr hoping that there will be, uh, that he'll be able to win in November and then uh, will uh, be in the majority. He's hoping the Republicans take the, the House as well. This is the look at the Democratic uh, race for the U.S. 
House 6th District, and Jeff Young uh, with an advantage right now over Chris Priest. Uh, we'll continue to watch that. The number's uh, too close to call at this point. We are continuing to follow the numbers for mayor here in Lexington, and we want to make sure that you know right now these numbers that we're bringing to you right now are still the absentee numbers and also the early voting numbers here in Fayette County. So right now you see Linda Gorton there, 78% of the vote as the incumbent. Uh, and Bill, as we're looking at Adrian Wallace and David Kloiber, it is very close, but of course it is still very early. We have not received that right. bulk of the number here and, in the county. And we were told all along that, uh, you know, those numbers would then suddenly come. Sure. And so we'll get a final uh, pretty those, quickly. Yes. Uh, Chad Hedrick is covering the mayor's campaign for us tonight, and they're over at Crank and Boom having a, quite an evening, and he's joining us now uh, with uh, the report from there. Well, Bill and Amber, I just talked to Mayor Gordon just a few minutes ago asking her how she was feeling by seeing those early returns from absentee voting and early voting. She said, quote, we are happy campers right now, just now anxiously waiting to, for us to get those uh, remaining results from today's polling to, to come in. But she says, again, she's very confident that this is going to be a good night for her and give her the momentum to carry through to that second term in that election in November. She's just now waiting to see who she will potentially be facing in the general election. Live in Lexington, Chad Hedrick, WKYT. Chad. All right, Chad, thank and, you. Uh, David Klorber, city councilman, first termer there. He sits uh, right at the council table with the mayor, but he decided to uh, challenge yeah. uh, for this race. Chelsea Jones has been with his camp tonight here at his Lexington home, and she joins us now. Chelsea. Well, not too long ago, T David Kloiber came out and spoke with reporters. He told us he feels nervous about those election results, but says he is confident he can still become Lexington's next mayor. Now, if elected, he says he plans to focus on crime and the lack of affordable housing. So far, he spent about $275,000 for his campaign and says if he advances forward, he is prepared to support himself financially if necessary. You guys, back to you. All right, an interesting development there. Let's check in with the Adrian Wallace campaign. They've been having quite a party yeah, tonight. Yeah, it was already a party earlier. Shelby Lofton is at Elixir tonight. Mm -hmm. Bill and Amber, so very upbeat here. We're hearing you and we're seeing you on the TVs inside the bar saying that this race is very close. But Wallace's supporters are very relaxed as they wait for those numbers to come in. I talked to Wallace a few minutes ago and he said he's feeling good about his position in this race tonight. He said a lot of people voice their support for him. But I asked him about the low voter turnout for this election. I talked to the Secretary of State about yesterday. Wallace said he wants to work on that civic engagement. And he also touched on Lexington's homicide rate, which is a focal point of this mayoral race. Wallace wrapped up saying he wants to lead Lexington into the future with new policies, bringing in technology while maintaining the industries the area is known for. Of course, horse racing being his prime example. We'll continue to be here tonight watching as this tight race plays out. For now, live in Lexington, Shelby Lofton, WKYT. All right, Shelby, thanks so much. And we, again, we are still waiting. And as Bill said, we anticipate that large jump of numbers right. to come from here in Lexington and Fayette County. Right now, we're just looking at those absentee right. numbers and, and, and early voting. And, and the, 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 they're reporting the entire counties at one right. time this year. It's different uh, this year. Right. Uh, we do want to mention the 12th District Senate seat, and that's where Alice Forge Kerr mm -hmm. is uh, retiring after uh, uh, more than 20 years in the Senate. Uh, that was not on the ballot today, but there will be a, a spirited race, it looks like. Like sure. in the fall, Amanda Bledsoe uh, will be the Republican, and Paula uh, Setzer Kissick will represent the Democrats. And uh, Setzer Kissick uh, ran just behind uh, Forgy Kerr right. uh, four years ago. So uh, this could be an interesting race that we'll watch uh, in a part of Lexington. There will be several new positions because there are several females who are stepping right. out of their roles who have been long standing folks right. there in it, Frankfurt. It, so it will be interesting to see. You think about uh, Susan uh, Westrom mm -hmm. uh, here at uh, Kelly Flood in yep. Lexington. Uh, uh, and uh, there's some retirements in uh, in Louisville as well. And uh, down in uh, southern Kentucky, we mentioned Nick Wilson. He'll be uh, replacing uh, the state representative down there. Uh, All right. So, uh, we want you to join us tonight at 10 here on The CW, and then we'll have the very latest at 11 on WKYT. Your luck is on a roll with these exciting new 
scratch-off games from the Kentucky Lottery. Now at your nearest Kentucky Lottery retailer. <laughs> 